Well, the issue is this. If I'm in growth, I go out and move forward toward it. But when I start to see stress, I have to protect myself. So the body gets, from the signal that the brain says, okay, mobilize the body for what? Growth or protection under stress? Protection. Well, how do you do that? And here's the answer. That the signal goes from the brain to the pituitary gland. Remember pituitary gland? Even you got that in high school. What is the, 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 the common name of the pituitary gland? The master gland. What does it mean? It's the gland whose function shapes the rest of this. So the brain says to the master gland, growth or protection. When the stress level is up, the master gland is given the, the signal to set up the body in the protection. So what happens is the uh, pituitary gland releases ACTH, which is a hormone that goes to the adrenal glands, which are on top of the kidneys. The adrenal glands secrete what? The adrenergic hormones, adrenaline. What's adrenaline for? Fight or flight. Now here's the interesting point. When the master gland says stress, what am I going to be in growth or protection? Okay, now here's what happens. The hormones of the adrenal gland squeeze or constrict the blood vessels in the viscera. And what they do is they force the blood from the viscera to go to the arms and the legs. Why would it do that? Think about why. Because you've got to run. So you've got to nourish the muscles. Well, the thing is, it preferentially puts blood into the, into the arms and legs. Well, the question is, if it preferentially put the blood into the arms and the legs, where was the blood before it was in the arms and legs? In the viscera. What's the function of the blood in the viscera? What functions? Growth. So when I get scared, what's the first thing that happens? I take the blood from here and push it out to here. Why? Because I've got to run and move and fight or flight or whatever it is I'm going to do. Well, the point is this. As soon as I got stressed, I shut down my growth mechanisms. The more stress you're under, the more chronically you suppress the growth mechanism. It's not, it's not a conscious decision. It's a part of the system called the HPA, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The significance of it is that the releasing of the glucocorticoids and adrenaline caused a fight or flight response. Well, here's an interesting point. Okay, do, did you get this right away? That under stress, the chemistry of the body causes the blood to go from the gut region into the arms. Does that make sense? Okay, and it makes sense then, if I don't have the blood in the gut, then the function of the gut is reduced. And that's what happens. But here's the other thing. Now think about this one, because this is like a, another adding an insult to an injury issue. And it goes like this. My immune system is a very expensive organ system to run. It costs a lot of body energy to run. It's a very high energy usage. If I am trying to protect myself from something that threatens me on the outside, do I use my immune system for that job, yes or no? What's the immune system function? Protection on the inside, so bacteria or viruses get in me, okay? So here's the point. I start to see the lion. I get the release of the adrenaline and the glucocorticoids. The blood is running into my arms and legs so I could run away from the lion. What do you think happens to my immune system? Do I increase its function or decrease its function? Decrease it. In fact, the same hormones, this is the point, the same hormones in stress are used by the medical profession to shut off the immune system in people who receive uh, transplants of organs and tissues. Why? Because I don't want to reject them. So how do I regulate the immune system? Well, I give them these hormones. But what hormones are these? These are the hormones from stress. So it says, okay, you're not receiving a, a, a graft of an organ or a tissue, but you're under stress. What happens to your immune system? It shuts down. And the reason why it does that is conservation of energy because I'm dealing with the external environment as the source of the threat. Well, you know this as well as I know this. When you get stressed, whether it's at school or at work, when the stress levels get real high, that's when you get sick. Why? Because when the stress levels got real high, that's when you also shut off your immune system. Important point about it is this. Then people say, well, I caught a cold. Or I caught something. The new, the, the, not new, it's actually, it, it's been a long-standing understanding in medicine already is this. Everyone in this audience is already infected with almost all the common pathogens in humans right now. They're in your blood. I can take a sample of your blood right now and I'll show you the bacteria and viruses that live in your blood. And you say, but Bruce, I'm not unhealthy. I'm pretty damn healthy. Look at me. So what are you talking about? I'm infected. And see what the name of the organisms are given as a group. They're called opportunistic organisms. What does it mean? It means that they live in your body, but they can't thrive. They can't thrive when you're in health. When you're in health, your physiology is like in a perfect balance. It doesn't support these organisms. But the moment you get stressed, 
start to shut down the immune system and you change the physiology of your body, then these organisms take the advantage. That's why they're called opportunities. That they were there all the time, but they can only express themselves when you're in a weakened state. When do you get in a weakened state? When you're under stress. So all of a sudden you start to get sick. You didn't necessarily catch it. You already got it. So the issue was this. What do you need to do to stay healthy? Regulate the stress. And what I will really emphasize over and over again, that remember I said approximately 5% of the people are affected or impaired lifestyle because of genetics. So their genetic defects, birth defects affect 5%. 95% of the people don't have defects in their genes and should live a normal life. When they start to get sick, then we can't go to the genes and start blaming the genes. We have to recognize that it was the environmental signals that we were adjusting ourselves to because when we're under stress, we automatically shut off growth. Now, you thought that was bad enough. You know, we shut down the viscera so we can run and so we're not getting growth. And we shut down the immune system because at that point, uh, it's not helping us with an external threat. Let me add the last kicker to it. And here's the kicker that's real important. Think about it. In a fight or flight situation, do you think you would use neurological reasoning and conscious, you know, like this, you know, that? Or do you use reflex behavior? Which one? <laughs> reflex behavior. You know what? Reflex behavior is the hind brain, and thinking and logic and reasoning are the forebrain. So here's what happens, and most of you have experienced it. It's called exam stress. And here's how it works. The moment the adrenaline levels and the glucocorticoid levels rise to get you into a fight-or-flight posture, remember I told you the blood vessels in the viscera are squeezed shut and forces the blood out to the periphery? The blood vessels in the forebrain get squeezed shut and only feed the blood to the hindbrain. When you're under stress, you lose intelligence. It's required because it's not a time to be thinking, it's a time to be responding. So the issue is, and if you've been in an exam stress, you know what that means. It's like you study like three days in a row. You got, oh, man, I really, I'm going to get an A. I sit down, open up the exam book, look at the first question. I don't know the first question. You know what happens? You could feel your body begin to change right there. Adrenaline's running all over. You start to sit in a seat. You're starting to shake. Your muscles are ready to run. Why? It'll protect your life now. And then you're trying to think of the answer. And guess what? You cannot think of the answer to that question. You probably cannot think of the answer to the next question or the next question until you do what? until you calm back down again. The reason is this, it's a protection mechanism that thinking is not helpful under a stressful situation. It will interfere with the response. So the bottom line is this, three things happen under stress, each one of them debilitating you at three different levels. Level one, your viscera shuts down, your growth and maintenance mechanisms are reduced. Number two, your immune system is shut down or inhibited to conserve energy, which then allows opportunistic organisms free run of the playground. Number three, in response to the stress, you start operating from reflex behavior, and your intelligence in the response is now lost from the response. And all of a sudden, you see the debilitating effects of stress. Now, it's not bad for an acute thing. I'm running, I fall down, I hurt myself. I can go through an acute little stress response. When does it have damage? I'll give you the simple, simple um, analogy to make sense of it. Imagine a community, let's go back to the 1950s. Remember those years when we were afraid the Russians were going to drop bombs on us, okay? So what did we do? We built bomb shelters. So the kids don't know about that, but we had bomb shelters. Now here's the issue. There's a community. Here we are in Memphis. Kids are going to school. Factories are working. People are doing jobs. The community is in a state of growth, right? Yes or no? Say yeah. Good, good following on that. Good. Okay, in a state of growth. Now here's the issue. The air raid siren goes off. Where do the people go? To the bomb shelter. What happened to the job? It stops. The community function stops. The cells or the people are not into the, involved with the community. They're out to save their own individual lives. And the point is this. I go down in the bomb shelter and I wait and five minutes later the all clear goes. Then what do we do? We go out of the bomb shelter, we go back to work, and it was just like, an, that's called an acute response. It's just a momentary event. So there was a short, you know, it's like a coffee break. We took an extra long coffee break, right? Here's where the problem comes. This is where the issue is. We're working on a job. The air raid siren goes off. We run into the bomb shelter, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and there's no all clear. What happens then? It's, it's automatic. What happens? Stress, and what happens to your survival? 
How long can you live in the bomb shelter? Or how much food did you store in there? And the bottom is this. What happens when you run out of food? Then what happens? You die. Here's the issue. Your cells are in a community. They work together in a coherent group just like the community of people. The moment the air raid siren goes off in, in the body saying our survival is under threat, then the cells get into the bomb shelter. The problem is most of our stresses are, are chronic. They're there all the time. And as long as we maintain a chronic stress, then the more stress we maintain, the more cells in my body stay in the bomb shelter and don't come back out. And the relevance is the cells will die, the tissues will undergo a disorganization, and disease will ensue. And the consequence, the stress. It wasn't the genes, it wasn't the system. It was the belief that went into it. 